Podcast is in VFAB. Clear! The Metal Gear series that has begun in 1987 has the most complex plot in the video game history. The overall story is as twisted as the mind of the visionary Hideo Kojima himself. There have been dozens, if not hundreds, of fan theories based on tropes and symbols in the previous games. Even the upcoming Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, is already being subject to great theories. Worst of all, it's hard to keep up with the plot as the series is anything but chronological, spans decades of lore and has graced various gaming systems. In this video, we'll focus on Big Boss, one of the characters we get to play in Metal Gear series and the protagonist of the upcoming game. As the games are quite complex and one video wouldn't be enough to sum up all of the subplots and characters, treat this video more as a preparation for playing Metal Gear Solid V. We'll leave some smaller parts and events out so that you can still enjoy previous Metal Gear games despite knowing how they end. Be careful, spoilers ahead. What a thrill. I'm searching and I'll melt into you. What a fear in my heart. But your soul supreme. Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, takes place before all of the other games. It was here where we got first introduced to Naked Snake, a special agent from the Fox unit tasked with the virtuous mission. Supported by Major Zero, Paramedic and Signet, Snake embarks on his mission. The year is 1964 and Snake is sent to the Soviet Union to help a rocket scientist, Sokolov, get past the Iron Curtain. While extracting Sokolov, we encountered Ocelot, one of the series regulars and the future pal of Big Boss. Sadly though, the virtuous mission was a complete and utter failure. Sokolov is taken in by the GRU, a nationalistic faction opposing Khrushchev. Apart from that, Naked Snake is left for dead by his former mentor, the Boss. The Boss herself is a war hero who defected to the Union and was now part of GRU's leader Volgen's special Cobra unit. Upon leaving, with Sokolov on board, Volgen launches one of the two small Davy Crockett warheads on the nearby facility, for which the United States is blamed. Volgen now has Sokolov, and the East and the West are again at each other's throats. Naked Snake recovers, and is sent back to action. The codename for the new mission is Operation Snake Eater. The objective? Take down the boss, stop Volgen, and destroy the stolen Shagohod, a nuclear-equipped tank and the first Metal Gear. Upon Snake's arrival, he is to be contacted by a double agent Adam, but is met by the mysterious Eva instead. The elusive blonde has infiltrated Gru's ranks and it seems that she and Snake share a common interest. On their way to Groznygrad, Volgin's main base, Snake makes his presence known by gradually taking down the squad members of the Cobra unit. Soon after, Snake is captured and tortured by Volgin. When Ocelot tries to shoot Eva after the torture, Snake sacrifices his eye to save her. Luckily, our hero escapes, once again gets patched up and goes after Volgen. It is revealed that Volgen has access to the Philosopher's Legacy, which makes him that much more powerful. The aforementioned legacy is a large fortune gathered by the Americans, Chinese and the Russians at the beginning of the 20th century. Snake and Eva get back together, take down Volgen and the Shagohod. In the final encounter with his former mentor, Snake learns that the boss was actually undercover and her mission was to become a traitor, to get closer to Volgen, later to be taken down by her own protege. Our hero is heartbroken as he is given the microfilm with the location of the legacy by his dying teacher. Trying to escape, Snake and Eva encounter Ocelot one last time. Snake is forced to a duel of Russian roulette, but it turns out that the bullet was fake. Ocelot, who was actually a double agent, leaves paying his respects to Snake. It seems that the crisis has been averted, and Snake and Eva enjoy a romantic evening after the mission. Snake wakes up alone with the legacy stolen by Eva, who was actually working for the Chinese. Nevertheless, Snake is welcomed home as a hero and awarded the title of Big Boss, the greatest soldier alive. The new boss, however, is bitter and saddened by his experiences. 
he realizes that governments change and soldiers are nothing but puppets. His change from war hero to a terrorist begins. A large part of Big Boss's story spans two PSP games. The first one, Portable Ops, is set in 1970. For the past years, Big Boss was the leader of the Fox unit, but quit. Our hero is kidnapped by a mysterious group and kept in an abandoned nuclear facility on the San Geronimo Peninsula. He is later tortured and interrogated by Lieutenant Cunningham of the Fox unit he used to lead once. Cunningham wants to know where part of the philosopher's legacy is, but doesn't get an answer. Later on, Snake becomes friends with a fellow prisoner, Green Beret Roy Campbell, and the two escape trying to contact Snake's former leader, Major Zero. They fail, but soon after learn that both Big Boss and Zero are charged with treason. Our heroes join forces to stop the leader of the new Fox group, Gene, who is a soldier genetically modified to resemble the boss and has the power to influence both Americans and Russians with his supernatural charisma. During an encounter with Cunningham, Big Boss learns that the whole thing was a setup by the Department of Defense against the CIA. More is revealed when Boss classes with Gene, who is preparing his own Metal Gear, Raksa, for launch. Fox's new leader wanted to control the world through an armed force and create a new one, Army's Heaven. It is also revealed that Operation Snake Eater was actually a big setup. Gene is shot down by Big Boss and on his deathbed gives our hero a microfilm with all of the data for his Heaven project, as he believes Big Boss to be a worthy successor of his idea. Ten years ago, the Times rejected the Boss and killed her. And now, we're the ones being tested. Will the times erase us, or work with us? It's gonna be a lonely battle. No good or evil, no winners or losers. Business will have to wait. The question we have to ask ourselves now is, can we survive long enough to see the 21st century? I'm with you, boss. Flash forwards to 1974, where boss has cut all his ties with the CIA and formed Militia Sans Frontières, an army without borders, free from government schemes. Along with his new partner, Kazuhira Miller, the two are approached by Ramon Galvez and Paz to repel what seems like CIA activity in Costa Rica. Galvez admits that he was in fact sent by KGB and offers a base in the Caribbean for MSF services. Believing that CIA is gathering warheads, Snake recruits the local rebels along with Amanda and Chico who will later play a part in Metal Gear Solid V. It is revealed that a man named Hot Coldman is the mastermind behind the operation and the titular Peace Walker. The eponymous mech is developed by Huey Emerich, who later joins MSF. The Peace Walker is a nuclear deterrent device that can launch its own nuke instantly where someone else in the world launches another one. It is revealed that Peace Walker's AI is modeled after the first boss herself. The mech is fed fake data by Coldman to launch a nuke and to provoke the US, but eventually Snake stops the Goliath, which later on self-destructs, as boss would. Soon after, MSF starts construction of their own deterrent, Metal Gear Zeke. Sometime after, Zeke, controlled by Paz, attacks the mother base, as Paz was in fact a double agent for the Patriots a group that Big Boss formed with Major Zero after the St. Hieronymo incident, but which he left two years later. When Big Boss was in a coma back then, because reasons, a sample of his DNA was taken for the Enfant Terrible project. In this project, Eva, the one from Metal Gear Solid V and another Patriot, became a surrogate mother for Boss's clones, Solid, Liquid and Solidus, who played vital roles in Metal Gear Solid 1, 2 and 4. Anyway, back to the 70s. Zeke is destroyed and Paz falls down into an ocean. Big Boss continues to run the army for hire, which will later improve upon Jean's idea and form Outer Heaven. Ten days ago, we got reports that Paz was still alive. She's being held.
held for interrogation at a camp on the southern tip of Cuba. If she's still alive, we need her on our side. The previously released Ground Zeroes acts as a direct prologue for Phantom Pain. The prologue features a small mission in 1975 on which Big Boss must retrieve Paz from mysterious captors. Miller believes that Paz, who apparently isn't dead, was actually a triple agent and the MSF must go get her. Big Boss also learns that Chico went after Paz but was captured. A mysterious group called XOF is involved with the kidnapping but covers its tracks. Having saved Chico and retrieved Paz, Big Boss sets off to the mother base, where a suspicious weapon inspection by the UN is taking place. On the helicopter ride to the base, we learn that Paz has a bomb planted in her body, but the medic manages to get rid of it. Upon arrival at the mother base, it turns out that the inspection was actually fake, and XOF forces are attacking MSF. Snake, Miller, Paz and Chico escape, but it turns out that Paz had another bomb on her, which explodes and makes the helicopter crash. Big Boss falls into a coma once again, from which he wakes up nine years later, at the start of Phantom Pain. Draw their swords from their ranks for Armageddon. I'm nuclear, I'm we hope that you liked our summary of the story of Big Boss and are ready to play in Phantom Pain. Of course, we didn't even scratch the top of the complex lore of the Metal Gear universe and the full story is yet for you to discover. Let us know if we have missed something or if you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Yeah.